Yes, you can play Simpsons Hit and Run on your modded Switch or on your modded Vita. It feels great and it is a great achievement to have it available natively on these handhelds. Today we are comparing both versions side by side. Also, just a quick reminder, this is not a tutorial, this is not an installation guide, because YouTube doesn't like those. It is simply a comparison or a celebration of these magnificent pieces of software engineering. So, let's get cracking! First, how is it even possible? It is possible thanks to Xeno Arrows, that created both of these ports, big thanks to him. Both of these ports are based on a PC source code that was leaked last year. The ports required quite a lot of work, especially the Vita version, because it has weaker hardware. It took the developer like a year to get it into the current state of affairs. For the comparison, I'm using the latest release 0.6.1 from July 2024 for both versions. It goes without saying that both ports are fully playable and fully functional, so let's boot them up. Initial loading is much quicker on Switch. This is to be expected, it uses basically a next generation hardware compared to the Vita. Cutscenes do work without any stutters or graphical glitches. They are in 4x3 ratio. In the main menu, everything is same. Resume game, load game, scrapbook, options, bonus game, new game. In the options, we can nicely see all the controls in car and on foot. There are also correct images. Vita image for Vita controls and Pro Controller for Switch controls. Now, let's start a new game. Again, no issues with any of the cutscenes. They run exactly at the same speed to my naked eye. In-game loading takes a lot longer on the Vita. 4 gigs of RAM plus much stronger CPU on the Switch are the main culprits. Now we are in-game and both versions looks absolutely stunning. They run in widescreen 16 by 9 ratio, Vita is in 540p resolution and Switch is in 720p. When I take a closer look, the difference in resolution is not really noticeable. I think it is because Vita screen is smaller or maybe it is because I'm getting older and my eyes are not what they used to be. For this comparison I'm using OLED Vita and first generation Switch. There is tiny bit difference in color quality. To my eyes, all Vita colors look a bit more saturated and it's tiny bit darker than Switch version. What does it look like to your eyes? I don't have any other modded Switch, so I cannot compare it to anything else. But I have Vita Slim with LCD colors and here is how it compares to Switch LCD colors. In the pause menu, all the options are exactly the same, there isn't much we can change in terms of picture quality, but we can change a lot in terms of gameplay. We can for example change an inverted camera for normal one, which I'm a big fan of. Both latest versions do also support NTSC and PAL versions of the game, that means multi-language support, Portuguese, Spanish and French along the English. There is tiny bit difference in controlling the character on foot. As you may know, there are two extra triggers on the Switch and they are used for zooming in to your character and for looking up. There are no such functions on the Vita, but you can still control the camera view and get closer with right joystick. You just cannot get that close. And you cannot really look up the way you can on the Switch. This is not really a game-breaking feature, I think these functions could have been easily mapped to left and right trigger on the Vita, because these buttons are not used for anything when you are on foot anyway. There is no config file, so it would need to be done by the developer in the upcoming update. When we are in car, the controls are same, but with the extra triggers on Switch you can also accelerate and brake. On the Vita you accelerate with X and break with square. Let's finally look into the gameplay itself. When I'm on foot, I don't really feel any difference at all. The character is moving slow, so even when there is some frame drop, I don't really feel it. 
When I'm in car, frame drop on the Vita is certainly more noticeable, but not to the point I would be pissed off and I would want to quit the game. I have made for you some side-by-side -side comparison of the initial driving and the first mission. I intentionally didn't show up the frame rate, so you're not looking at it, but you're looking at the gameplay and you are trying to spot the difference, which is quite hard. You can only feel it very occasionally whilst playing it. Zeno did a wonderful job on the Vita port, clearly he did a great job with the Switch port too, but you would expect this game to run on Switch without much problems, which cannot be really said about the Vita port. You would only be dreaming about something like this running natively on the Vita. And hey, here we are in 2024 and dreams came true. The cheats do work for both versions. You need to use GameCube combinations for Switch and PS2 for Vita. Plus, it also enables special cheats that were not available for officially released version of the game, like unlock all missions, unlock all movies, and I especially like Kick Swap's character model. Cheats are essential for the proper Simpsons Hit and Run experience, and I'm extremely glad even new ones were enabled. In the end, which port is better? Switch port runs at stable frame rate and at high resolution, and if I'm meant to be objective, it is the better one. However, Vita port runs on underpowered device and it's absolutely enjoyable experience, which makes it the more impressive one, at least in my opinion. If you own a modded Switch or modded Vita, both of these ports are must install. I own both of them and I have it installed on both as you can see. And I think I would have installed it even if I wouldn't be making this video. The installation is relatively easy to do. You need official game files. You can find full installation guide in the official GitHub release page. Link for it is down below. Or you can even try to use Google search for a ready to go package. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like this, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, join if you feel extra generous. Thanks to you for watching, thanks to all my channel members for their support, and I will see you in the next one. Peace! I have also noticed when I put Switch uh, whilst playing the Simpsons game into the sleep mode and then I resume it, there is like a Crack, crackling in the audio. As you can, you can hear it the best when you when I'm in the car. But then when I jump out, you can still hear there's like this crackling of the audio. Then you just need to you know quit the game and launch it again for it to sound normally. On the Vita, however, there is nothing like that happening. Here I'm gonna resume the game. And the audio sounds absolutely normal without any crackles. So I can just keep on playing instead of, you know, restarting the game. No? Hey! <laughs> 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 Oh! 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 Oh!